Hello, welcome to the special report, your news and views program about geek gaming culture on the internet. Coming up in the show today, Sailor Moon Crystal 3rd season has been confirmed now by Toy Animation. Yeah, we're going to get to all the details on that exciting announcement. My name is JD Shadow and the special report starts right now. Well, this time it is official. No false flags, no false hope, no nothing. This is as official as it gets. On the official Sailor Moon website, Toy Animation announced that the third season of Sailor Moon Crystal is going to be in production or is already in production. According to their official page, which we had translated through Google Translate, it says, quote, Today at Tokyo MXE Animation, which celebrated the final episode of Sailor Moon Crystal, the long-awaited third phase is the production of Death Busters Hand the Sighted. Anime and latest series is intended to visualize the original comic's full third phase of the fifth volume, th volume six, Death Busters, edited by Nakio Takeuchi, Fight and Sailor Warrior, the, a mysterious organization, Death Busters, it has been drawn. In addition to the familiar main characters such as Sailor Moon, and Sailor Chibi Moon, Sailor Uranus, Sailor Neptune, it appeared Sailor Saturn from popular outside the solar system warriors will finally mustering the 10 warrior. Furthermore, in Sailor Moon 20th Anniversary Project is being also new project progress. Ceremony Crystal Phase 3 Death Busters Ed follow up on a new project I will be notified by this HP please look forward to. In addition Ceremony Crystal First Phase Dark Kingdom Edition was rebroadcast determined from at Tokyo MX at October 5th Monday 23rd. Even those who the was already seen Crystal also toward the unseen do not miss this opportunity. Now I apologize for that broken English Google Translate is not the best thing in the world in order to translate any form of website because it translates it literally so please be advised of that but the one thing I can say about this after being a little bit cynical when I first heard this on Twitter is yeah we finally get it we finally get the official confirmation we kind of figured that it was gonna happen at some point but we had the couple of things from Biggs and then from Toy Europe saying that it was going to be in production or all 60 episodes was going to be aired on the network so whatever it was that they had said but this is as official as it gets and and the only reason why I'm not jumping up and down right at the moment is because it is still about 11 32 in the morning when I record this and I woke up about a couple of hours ago when I heard this news like wow this is unbelievable that we get this this is unbelievable now there are some questions about this and we're gonna get to them but the first thing is that we did not know whether or not we were gonna get this or not this is why we were so excited. The first reason why everybody was so excited of hearing this news is because we did not know what was going to happen. Sakai Michihira, I know I'm pronouncing that wrong, I know I'm butchering that name, had left Toy after saying that their work was completed on this, referring to the first 26 episodes. He was kind of controversial. He was one person who many people were saying he did not take criticism all that well, and, and many people sought to him as the fault for the animation errors that are occurred during the first couple of episodes of the series. Of course, I thought they were making a mountain out of a molehill about those things, but some of those were too much to ignore, such as the episode 2 animation errors, and you probably all know by now what I'm talking about. And there were many critics of the series as well. There were many people who were saying that everything about it was bonked. There were Tumblr posts, Tumblr blogs that pointed out every single error that the series had made but the long and short of it is it was pretty popular in Japan it was pretty popular in the States as well we still don't have the dub edition and many people I know who I talked to on Twitter about this anime says that they will be waiting for the dub they say they haven't seen Sailor Moon Crystal yet but they want to they do want to see the series maybe they're just waiting for the dub and maybe Toy Animation finally figured that one out or maybe they were just keeping this secret but I think Toy Animation saw the right on the wall that yeah we probably are waiting for the dub. We're probably waiting for another form of venue in order to see the series because some people did criticize the notion that it was streaming only, though I can safely say that perhaps with the way Crunchyroll has been very 
popular, maybe that is the way to go in some form of fashion. Though, I didn't really hear about Nico Nico until I heard that Sailor Moon Crystal was going to be debuting. So, some people might not be too keen on the streaming services, though I don't know why not at this point. Crunchyroll is a terrific service. I mean, it is. And Hulu Plus, to its own credit, is a good service, even though Neon Alley is still not available in Canada. What is going on there? But the bottom line is that we did not know whether or not this was going to even happen, and now we obviously know it is going to happen. But there is some questions, there are some small questions that we want to get asked. First of all, who is going to be the director? Who is going to be the writer? Is there any improvements that are going to be down the pipeline? We already know that Mujihira had exited stage left at Toy Animation, so this is not the first time that a Sailor Moon anime series had changed directors. We know the classic series had at least three or four different directors, so, so it's not unreasonable to suspect that there were going to be several directors that are going to have a hand in the series, or at least two or three of them. We did not think that as being the complete end of the series. So, what is going to be changed? What is going to be different? What is going to stay the same? Is there going to be a new theme that's going to be implemented? We do know Moon Pride is pretty well received, but, but we know how anime series are. They have a tendency to change themes every once in a while. They have a tendency to change the theme to whatever is the relevant way to go for what they're talking about in the particular season. And things do change in the third series. Things really do change. It gets a lot darker. It gets a hell of a lot more intense with the inclusion of Sailor Uranus and Sailor Neptune. Sailor Uranus is probably the most fan favorite of any of them outside from Sailor Saturn. She is probably the most well liked out of any of the sailors and for good reason. Her character is well fleshed out. It is heavily documented about the relationship that her and Michiru have and it is very documented of what it talks about and what it goes into. The idea of mythology, the well most of the Sailor Moon series has to do with mythology but this one more so than any other one they had so far up to this point. There were talks about the Messiah, the Holy Grail, the Three Talesmen as we see out of the image that they put on the official site, the sword and the mirror that they have which depicted Uranus and Neptune respectively. And yes, Haruka and Michiru are going to be applauded and rightfully so. And with a new director at the helm, there might be some animation improvements. There might be better quality of the animation. They might take more of their time. We might see a reevaluation about when these episodes do come out. At what staggeration do these episodes come out? They might go ahead and change that first and third Saturdays of every month thing. They might figure out a new schedule about these things. And I would hope they will because that seemed a little bit crazy. We had to wait a year to see the conclusion of the first 26 episodes. We had to wait a full year and we kind of got worn out after a little bit. Even though we really loved the series and even though we wanted to see more of the series, we kind of got worn out about that whole scheduling and how they staggered the whole release schedule. I really hope that they modify it to make sure that we're not waiting a full year to see the conclusion of the particular saga that they're going into, the particular arc they're going into. Those kind of improvements are going to be welcome as far as I'm concerned and as far as probably everybody else is concerned as well. Though we also want to see them take their time as well. We want to see them do well with the series. We want to see them again be able to wow us with the animation that they're going to provide. We want to see that magic be. And one of those factors is who's going to be the new director? Who is going to be the new producer director of this series? They haven't said that yet. They haven't announced who the new producer is going to be. What are their credentials? What is their attitude toward the series? How are they going to take criticism if they have an issue about any criticism that may come before them? There's a lot of questions about the production, about how it's going to go going forward, but more along the lines of that, there's also questions about when the date is. They haven't said a release date about when the first episode of this new series is going to debut. And they already said it was in production. They already said, hey, this is already something that we're all working on, but we do not have a definitive date yet. We do not have a definitive answer as to when we are going to start debuting the series. And I always said they're probably going to take a little bit of a break in between when we see the end of Act 26 and when we see the start of this, because probably they want to change some things up. They want to make sure that the criticism that they did receive about the first 26 episodes are not going to be had with this new series. And perhaps that 
that is the whole thing that they're trying to make sure that they get right is the animation problems that were going to be cleared up in the blu-ray editions the first 26 episodes are not going to be had here or they're going to have more of a minimal effect on it if it does happen now i'm understanding that it's going to happen you're going to have times when you're going to flub up but at the same time you shouldn't have that many you shouldn't have so many that people are going to try to nitpick and you're going to want to stop that however you can but i'm talking a lot about the technical aspects of the release date in the director and the animation that's going to come from that i'm talking a lot about that what about the story itself what about the possible changes that we might see we saw a little bit of a change about the dark kingdom mark but we saw what happened because of that we saw what they did at that 12 the whole hand wave the whole middle finger to everybody who was wanting a bit of a shift to that particular reimagining of the storyline we didn't know why they tried to keep the shintendo alive when they were just going to kill him off in act 12 with the simple shot by materia what i did not know what that was all about but i wasn't too interested in that storyline i wasn't too invested in that storyline but i really wish they gave beryl a bit more of a backstory i really wish they did more with her i really wish that they focused on the pgsm side of her or maybe the another story to give her a little bit of sympathy to have her turn on materia whatever and they didn't do that they didn't do that at all and many people complained about Sailor Moon being the one that stabbed the necklace I wasn't real concerned about that but the way that they just blew off her backstory was something that oh why and that was one of the things that made me think that because they got so much flack from that the second arc the dark moon the black moon arc they were a little too strict to the source material I think that maybe because they're more adaptive of the source material of the manga that perhaps people want to see a direct adaptation but that leaves so little room for character development in of itself the main criticism that Naoko Takeuchi had with the original manga series was that it moved a little too quickly some people thought it was a little too quick that it didn't really give any room for any other characters other than Usagi to develop so the filler when we got to the classic anime the filler was a good thing because it gave the other characters the degree of development Development. And one of the things that was intriguing about them attempting to do the Shintaro is still alive business is that we saw that whole storyline develop. There was some additional development. They decided to throw us a curveball, and that was something that I thought was going to be needed because a lot of people know how this manga is going to be. A lot of people, a lot of more hardcore Sailor Moon fans who have already seen or read all the manga know what's going to happen there. So they're going to look at those little mistakes. They're going to look at all of those things. If you throw them a curveball and make them pay attention, to more of the story you're going to be able to keep them away from having to nitpick every little thing and if you are going in there looking for something wrong you're going to find something wrong you guarantee you're going to find something wrong with that so i'm going to be wondering how are they going to make this adaptation are they going to be so strict to the manga that you're not going to see any deviation from it or you're going to see a little bit of deviation or are we going to get more of a brand new story we're going to get more of the pgsm style deviations i highly doubt they're going to go to that ladder style deviation but I'm leaving that in the open in case they do decide to go there. I'm just gonna mention that and we obviously know why Uranus and Neptune are well liked. Their relationship is well documented and their relationships is well fleshed out in the series and in the manga and they did do a very good job with the classic anime and how that whole thing went about even though they're cousins and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll just not mention that at all. We'll, we won't mention that anywhere else. So that is going to be a thing that's really going to be something that they're going to focus on there's really going to be something that the fans are going to want to see but this is also when chibi moon really gets some focus this is when chibi yusa really starts to develop her character this is because she meets her taro she meets sailor saturn and this is where things really get dark this is where that whole aspect of mistress nine and the whole aspect of the talesman and super sailor moon come into focus and that is the other reason why this series is so well liked the s series is a fan favorite because they did nearly everything right they got all the drama right they got the dark parts right and they also got the comedy right they had a great mixture of those three things and it's going to be interesting to see how they translate it in crystal it's going to be interesting to see how they keep that light-hearted stuff in there while moving into the more darker side of sailor moon this is when i made the comparison if you never heard me say this before that i thought dragon ball z and sailor moon was 
is like Superman and Batman in the anime genre of, well, animation or whatever. Where Dragon Ball Z was more like Superman, was more of a action-oriented anime, while Sailor Moon was more of the Batman side of things. It was more of the darker side. It was more of the psychological side. It was more focused on the dramatic aspects of how the villains develop and how the superheroes develop and more along those lines. It was more of darker storylines. You didn't see Superman go into more darker storylines, even though some people might prove me wrong with the dark side storylines. Superman did get kind of dark at times, but it didn't get as dark as Batman got, as far as I'm aware at least. And to me, the S series is more like a Batman saga. You could probably put the Joker or Harley Quinn or Two-Face in there instead of the Deathbusters and Tomo and all that. It was that big of comparison to me. It was that big of a darker storyline to me where you could probably put that whole mindset to it. And that's a good thing. Don't get me wrong. That is an absolutely great thing because I do like those darker storylines. I do like when they do take that chance to make a darker storyline. Although it can get overused at times. Don't get me wrong. Anything can be overused. But I do like those darker storylines. I do like when we get a little edgier now. When we get a little bit more daring now. And I would like to see how the relationship between Chibiusa and Hotaru plays out in Crystal as well. That is one of the storylines. That's one of the relationships that seems to take a backseat to the Uranus and Neptune relationship in the Yes series. And even though Uranus and Neptune's relationship is very groundbreaking, it is very glass ceiling breaking and it's if that's a phrase to be used there. I think storyline wise the Chibiusa and Hotaru relationship is much more important because of what exactly happens to Saturn and what Hotaru ends up becoming and what importance she has to the particular plot line that's going to be developed in that series. Uranus and Neptune's relationship is something that develops throughout the entire rest of the series through Super S and Stars but it is going to be Chibiusa and Hotaru's relationship that is going to have to be developed more along the lines of that particular series series that particular arc of the series so don't get me wrong by any stretch of the imagination the Haruka and Mitru relationship that needs to be developed as well is going to be so awesome to see those two come to life on crystal that animation style is going to be implemented for them and it's going to be so awesome to see it's going to be so intriguing to see that relationship take fold both of those relationships take fold I'm sounding like I'm selling one of the relationships short here and I don't mean to they're both equally as important and it shows you just how many things they got right. You can pick one thing or you can pick many things about this series that you liked. There is just so many things to like about the series. There is no one thing that you can pick as the main thing that you're going to be focused on in this particular saga. But there is a lot that you can pick. And you're never wrong with picking what your favorite part of it is. Whether it be the Haruka Michiru relationship. Whether it be the dark storyline. Whether it be the Chibi Yusa and Hotaru relationship. Or just the action in general. There's a whole hell of a lot of the act of action. The mythology of this being more intense and in depth than it was before this particular arc came about. There's so many things that you can pick as your favorite thing. You will not be wrong by any stretch of the imagination. This is an incredible announcement. The only reason why I'm being subdued right now is because this is a professional news and punditry show, and I'm trying to keep my composure a little bit because I am so excited about this. I'm so awesomely excited about this and you have no idea how hard it is to keep that composure in check when you're dealing with something that you've been waiting to hear about for such a long time and thank god toy finally said something how long did they have to wait for this just say something to say hey we might be working on something finally they say something yes of course finally now the one thing that's gonna get overshadowed by the whole fact that we're getting third season of Sailor Moon Crystal which by the way I'm surprised they are keeping Keeping the Sailor Moon Crystal subtitle there, I did think they might call it Sailor Moon something else other than Crystal, but whatever. But the one thing that's going to be overshadowed by this is the other announcement that came into our lap here, which is the Sailor Moon Crystal First Phase Dark Kingdom Edition was rebroadcast, determined by Tokyo MX, which basically means that they are talking about probably the dub. Now, this is more unclear about what they're talking about here. As far as I'm aware, they're talking about the airing of the series on more of a 
traditional network television sense. And you are free to correct me if I'm wrong on this because I did not really know even with the translation as to what they exactly was talking about. This is what I'm believing it's about. But the bottom line here is if that's the case, then that was probably their main hope is that they were going to show this on regular television on more traditional television and that was what gave them the boost they needed. Maybe the more traditional sense is the way to go in some cases and plus as I said the people might be waiting for the dub and now that Toy has seen a lot more of those people who were going to be interested in Sailor Moon Crystal but didn't have access to it is going to finally have access to it and in that sense is going to say hey this is a good series maybe we want more of it maybe that was their determining factor is whether or not the other outlets was going to do well with this series and I guess they are because we're getting this we're getting the third season we're getting a new series of Sailor Moon Crystal which is amazing hopefully this translates to a very good series hopefully this is done right maybe a new director will be a step in the right direction maybe this is a turning point for the entire series this is something to be excited about and I'm going to stop talking about it and start celebrating with everybody else because I'm tired of being subdued here that's going to do it for this edition of the special report thanks again for watching please share this with everybody you know get the word out it helps us out a great deal thanks again for watching please support all forms of independent journalism we definitely do need to do that my name is jd shadow and that just happened